Okay, so you have chosen me as your teacher to learn the fine arts of After Effects. But be aware, it is a long and stony way, but at the end you will gain endless possibilities and unlimited power. Yeah, hello and welcome to the Guru Lessons, the After Effects beginner course from marmoworld.com. My name is Matthias and in the different tutorials of this series I'm going to explain you step by step everything that you need to get started with After Effects. But getting started does not mean that it is going to be boring. Already in this first lesson we are going to create this cool guru clip that you have just seen. First, I show you how to import your footage and create the composition in which we are going to work. Then, I show you how to work with layers and change their position or scale, for example. Then, we are going to use blending modes to integrate the burning fire into the clip. Finally, I also show you how to export the final video using either After Effects Render Queue or the Adobe Media Encoder. But now let's start with the first part and importing your footage. Okay, so here we are now in After Effects and as you can see I'm using After Effects CS4 but you also can use any other version. So all these basics are really basically the same in all the different versions, CS3, CS5, whatever. Um, this is a startup welcome screen uh, that you see at the beginning. You can just close this and then uh, we are here in our main After Effects panel and or the After Effects user interface and you can see that it consists of many different uh, panels here and this might be quite scary to see so many things with so many different options and so on. Uh, the main thing we have to concentrate on is at first just three different panels. So we just need here the project panel. This is where we basically collect all the items that we need in our project. Composition where we we'll later have a preview of what we are doing and here our timeline. Yeah, and all these other things here are not so important and we can forget them at the moment. And um, also, if your interface is not looking exactly like this, but a little bit different, doesn't matter at all. So all these windows here, all these panels can be arranged freely. So I can, for example, take this character thing, keep the mouse uh, pressed and move it, for example, here. And now you can see the panel moved here. And I can, of course, also resize all the panels. So you can mess up your desktop completely here and everything can look completely different. However, if I'm using here a certain panel, like for example the project panel, you always can re-enable it here under window. You can find all possible panels and can get them if you, if you don't find them. So at the beginning you can really forget 90% of the panels, just the composition, project and here's this timeline panel are important. Okay, so now we need to import our uh, footage, so our video clips and images that we want to use to create this guru clip that you've seen at the beginning. And you can do this by right clicking here in our project and choosing import file. Yeah. An alternative would be to go to file and say here uh, import file or multiple files and then you can select uh, the files. Another third option is to directly drag and drop them from your Windows Explorer or uh, on Mac OS from your Finder. Yeah. These are the uh, clips that we are going to use. So you can see here the, the fire. It's just this fire filmed uh, on black. And then we've got here the clip with the guru with still uh, the fire missing. And we have here those stones or rocks in the foreground. So this is just an image. This is no video clip just a TIFF image where we have these uh, stones here already in front of a transparent background. So everything that is here white in this clip is actually already transparent. Uh, so now we need to import them. So what I can do is I select all of them and drag them here with the mouse uh, 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 pressed. Yeah. 
So keep the mouse pressed and move it here and you can see this plus symbol next to the cursor and now uh, they are dragged inside here. Very nice. So the next thing we can do is that we can rename those clips to make it a little bit uh, easier uh, to, uh, to, to know what they are. You can select it with a simple click and then hit return key on your keyboard. Then you can call this here, for example, Guru Clip. And then here this Arc Ripper thing was also return again, um, Fire. And let's call this here, this foreground element, this TIFF image, again with return, um, stones. Okay, now we have our elements here inside and now we need to combine them to our video clip. And for this, we need what is called a composition. So I can right click here again and say, instead of import my files, create a new composition. And if I do that, I can choose here a name for it and how many pixels it is wide and high and how many frames per second it has and the total duration. So in contrast to editing programs like Adobe Premiere or uh, whatever you are using, Sony Vegas or so, uh, you don't have to, you don't have like um, timelines, timelines of arbitrary lengths that get longer and longer as long as you need, but you need to specify the length of it. And uh, yeah, you can change it later, but uh, you have to take care of it and it's not uh, like uh, arbitrary lengths. Okay. I go here again to cancel because I want to show you another way of creating it. This is instead of right clicking and going to new composition, you can also click on this symbol here. Yeah, This icon is create a new composition. And here let's call it uh, my new comp. And now you can choose here between different presets. Let's say we want to have an NTSC D1 widescreen. This is 720 pixels wide and four 186 um, pixels high, 90 uh, 29.97 frames per second, and let's say it's 100 frames in total. Click OK. Now we have here next to our clips our composition, and we can have more than one composition per project. Yeah. So, uh, and if I have this composition here now, uh, I can I have it also here in my timeline view. These are exactly these uh, uh, frames of my composition. And now I can drag in here my clips. So for example, I can drag in here my Guru clip by keeping it, uh, 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 keeping the mouse button down and moving it here. Yeah. And now you can see I've inserted the Guru clip into this uh, timeline here. But the point is, okay, this time, this, uh, Guru clip doesn't look like my original Guru clip, and the point is that my composition is smaller than the Guru clip. Yeah, you can see the Guru clip has 1050 times 500 something uh, pixels, and my composition has just 720 uh, times 400 something. So it's cut at the end. I can scroll here out, I can see, okay, my clip is actually larger than my composition. Actually, I do this scrolling here by using my mouse wheel. Yeah, with your mouse wheel, you can scroll very nicely and also you can, if you keep the space bar of your keyboard uh, pressed, your cursor changes into this hand and you can then also move. Yeah, this is something important to navigate here. Use your scroll bar, uh, use your scroll wheel of your mouse to scroll in and out and keep the space bars uh, pressed to get this hand to, to move. And uh, you can also choose here so this is your default uh, cursor with which you can do basically everything. If you don't want these keyboard shortcuts, you can also select the hand tool here to move or select here some area that you want to uh, zoom into uh, using this. But I think it's more convenient to do it with your mouse wheel and the space bar. Yeah? Space bar selected. Uh, pressed and then you get this hand symbol. So we go back to our default thing here. What was our problem? Our problem was that the composition has not the same size as uh, our clip. So what we need to do is again right click here, say new composition and now choose here width and high that matches our clip. And there is an easier way of doing this than just looking up the exact numbers and copying them there. And this is Again, this was the button to create a new composition. Now we can just press the mouse button here and 
drag this onto this new composition button. So this means something like create me a composition that has exactly the size and the duration, a number of pixels, whatever, of this clip. Yeah, I do this and now I have here a second composition next to my comp, uh, my new composition that I created before. I have now this Guru Clip 2 composition that was created by dragging this onto the symbol. And if I switch here between these two, you can see here the composition was too small and here the composition now exactly fits the size of this uh, thing, of this clip, and also du the duration is uh, perfectly, uh, is, is exactly the duration of our clip. So create new compositions by dragging your footage onto this uh, uh, icon here. Okay, so this means now this is the comp that we are going to work with and this is the one we don't need anymore because it has the wrong size. So I select it and just hit the delete key to remove it. Yeah, I can also probably right click on it. Mm, no, not exactly. Anyway, so I can select it and hit the delete key. And now it asks, are you sure you want to delete the composition? I say yes. So we are only li left with this composition. And I again hit the return key to rename it and call it uh, just guru composition, yeah? And okay, as you've already seen, I can drag this element here to, to uh, jump or to look at different time points of my composition. Again, I zoom in here with the mouse wheel and you can see now here the guru is moving and what is of course missing is still this fire element. So we can take the fire here too and drag it yeah, with the mouse button, keep your mouse button pressed and move it here. And now I release the mouse button and uh, the fire appears in this window and also here. So you can see we have now the guru clip and the fire on top of it. Yeah? And the fire has only a certain duration, the clip, and now it is uh, here, the fire is not existing anymore. Uh, okay, you can now arrange those elements here in time. Yeah, so I can move here the fire clip uh, forward and backward. And in time, I can also zoom in with this here. And an important thing, if you look at this fire clip, is that here at the beginning, you can see there is this detonation films uh, written. And only after a few frames at this point, let's zoom in even further. So at this point, the actual clip starts. So if I want to trim the clip, I can just uh, move here to this beginning of the clip and just move it like this, yeah? And we will do this also for the end because here you can see the fire is occurring and at some point here, it's just occurring a second time. So we go just at the end of where the fire occurred the first time and want to, um, so that's the out point. Ah, now you can see that the end handle is gone out of my composition. So what I do, I temporarily drag it like this. And now I can grab here the end handle and shorten it. Yeah. So and I shorten it exactly until this point where the fire is gone. Okay, and now I can move it roughly here to the end where the guru is doing his, his magic things. Um, now I want to position this layer. Yeah, uh, and by th I can do this by just uh, clicking on it and moving it. So keep your mouse button pressed and simply move. Uh, there is another option and this is, you use here these triangles to see what you can do with the fire. What properties does a fire clip has? And it has currently only transform properties. And you find here anchor point, position, scale, rotation and opacity. And what we want to change, if we move it here, of course, is a position. And you can see that the position gets selected here and these numbers change when I move it. And of course, I can also change these numbers here directly. I can click on it and say 600, return, and now it moved. I can also press the mouse button, keep the mouse button pressed and move while it is pressed. Yeah, I can move left and right. And then I change this number. And this goes with basically any number in After Effects. So this is really convenient. Another thing I can, of course, change here is then the scale. 
A nice thing about the scale is also if I scale it below 0%, yeah, like minus 100 or so, you can see it flips. And what we can also do, we can just flip it in one direction. If you disable this here, then you can move each dimension separately and we can, for example, say in the one dimension we want 81% uh, and in the other dimension we want minus 81%. Uh, and uh, what this changes is that you can see now the fire is going here from right to left, whereas in the original one it was going uh, from left to right. Yeah? Now left to right and now I flip it, say minus 81% and now it's uh, exactly mirrored. Yeah. Okay, this is something you can also do with scale, uh, just mirroring stuff and of course making it larger or smaller. Rotation is possible with uh, this here. Yeah. So you can change this value to ro rotate it however you like. I set it back to zero. Uh, you can also move the anchor point. Anchor point is this point here that is currently in the middle and you can just change it. So now this point is not anymore in the middle of the picture but somewhere else. It seems to be pretty similar to position, right? But if you move position you can see that this point is moving with it and if you change anchor point the point is not moving. And the importance of this point is that the picture is always rotating around this point if you are uh, rotating it. Yeah, so anchor point is a point at which basically the layer is attached to your composition and around which it is rotating. A last thing you have here is opacity, where you can change yeah, the opacity or transparency of your clip. All of these elements are also available uh, with keyboard shortcuts. You can hit A for anchor point. Yeah, A on the keyboard hit reveals the anchor point, P reveals the position, S is scale, and R is rotation, and T is opacity. This is because opacity is basically transparency. Yeah? Think of transparency, T transparency is opacity. If I hit it a second time, it disappears. If I hit it again, it occurs. And you can also reveal several of them simultaneously by having uh, by keeping shift pressed. Yeah, now I keep the shift key pressed and hit uh, P, so position occurs in addition. And now I hit, for example, A with still the shift key pressed and anchor point also occurs. This is quite convenient that you can start revealing here stuff for uh, layers. At the moment it doesn't seem to be so important, but if you think that you have later 10 or 20 layers and for each of them you have always to click on these uh, 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 triangles here, it's really annoying. So you can do this for just, for example, keep all layers selected and hit P and the position of all of them occurs. Quite convenient. Okay, so now we have the fire here and the additional thing we also wanted to bring in are these stones. Yeah, So I drag them here and you can see hmm, now I don't see anything of the stones so far. Oh, I got accidentally selected this pen tool that I do not want. So if something behaves strange, you probably have selected the wrong tool. Make sure that you always have selected this here, usually. So now I have no stones visible here. It's because they are behind the Guru clip. Yeah? So I can move them in front of this. And now you can see here the stones. Maybe they are a bit dark, but if I move them, I guess you can see them. And if I move them before the fire clip, uh, they are even in front of that. But we want the stones to be behind the fire, but before the background clip. Yeah? And the idea of the stones is that we have here some stones uh, in the foreground on which the fire it can then burn. So here are the stones and now I select here the fire and move it roughly there. And now you can see the problem that, well, the fire of course is on top of this black background. So the stones had already transparency in the image, so it was no problem, but the fire is on black background. So we need to get rid of it. And you might think we could use some effects to somehow turn black into transparency. 
but we actually don't need it. Uh, you can use something much easier in After Effects, which are the so-called blending modes. So you, you can see that all layers now have the blending mode called Normal, which means if this layer is on top of the other one, you can just see this one. Yeah, no matter. Uh, so it's just basically this layer is the fire is replacing everything behind it. And now we want to change this. We want to change it. For example, we can let's try screen instead. And you can see, oh, it seems like the background is magically disappeared. It's just now screen means combine this layer, this fire layer, with the background in a different way. Yeah. And you can also try lighten, for example, which also doesn't look too bad. Or you can use add, which I like in particular because it makes this nice glowing here. Or you can linear color dodge, whatever. Vivid light doesn't look nice at all. So a good idea is to yeah, just try different blending modes and see which one uh, looks best for you. You can also learn a keyboard shortcut here, namely if you hit the shift key, uh, keep the shift key selected and hit minus, then you can cycle through the different blending modes. Yeah, Shift key selected, keep the shi shift key pressed and uh, hit the minus, uh, minus key and this cycles through the different blending modes. I actually like this add mode uh, quite a lot, so we keep it like this. And now I move this fire such that it perfectly fits here on the stones. I hit S to reveal the scale and adjust this scale maybe also a little bit. Uh, we can actually re-enable this here to make now everything scale again in both dimensions. So, hmm, okay, maybe around 80% was already a good choice, right? So 81%, let's keep it like this. It's nicely placed here. And the only thing that remains now is to also uh, put it on the right point in time. Yeah. Um, so, or maybe at this point, you really want to have a preview of what you already have done. So how is this working in After Effects? One thing that you have is, uh, let's scroll here, a window called Preview. And this preview window has these play buttons here. And if I just hit play, you can see that the video is playing. The point is that it's yeah somehow playing too slow and we have no sound. Yeah, And this is what always happens if you use this, that it can't play in real time because it's just not fast enough. Um, but what we use instead and what you will use 99% of the time for doing previews is this button here, RAM Preview. Yeah, Forget about all of these, you will rarely use them, just this one button. And what you need to understand for this one button is the work area, which is this part here on top that you can move by clicking on it and where you can start the begin uh, change the start and end point of it. And if you want to see a preview, for example, this area here, we just click on RAM Preview and then such a green bar will occur that says for this, I have already pre-computed uh, uh, the clip in my RAM. So I click on it and you can see it here growing. It is a long and stony way, but at the end you will gain endless possibilities and unlimited. It is a long and stony way. Okay, so now it played the RAM preview for this year and it played it in an endless loop because I've uh, selected this here. You can change this uh, by clicking on it. So now it will just play it once. Now it will play it in a loop and now it will play it forward back backward in kind of a ping pong fashion. Yeah, But I actually always like this loop thing. Um, and if I want to see a preview of some other area, I just move this, hit uh, again RAM preview. And you can see it starts computing the RAM preview and once everything in here is green, it plays it for you. Me as your teacher. Okay, I think this idea is clear. And now if you again look at this part, you could see that um, the timing here was not perfect. The fire occurred before it should occur. Way. But at the end, you will gain endless possibilities and Unlimited. So this un this this part was actually the one where when this hand uh, movement here happens, then the fire should actually start occurring. Yeah. So about about here. So I take again this clip, 
not the beginning or something, but in the middle, I press in the middle to, to move it such that it starts at this current point in time. Yeah. So again, let's look at a uh, RAM preview of this part. Endless possibilities and unlimited power. Endless possibilities and unlimited power. Okay, so I think this looks uh, very good. And uh, the next step is, of course, the question, how can I export this clip now? And if you want to export a clip, uh, there are two options, basically. The first option is that you use, uh, y that you render inside After Effects. And the second option is that you use the Adobe Media Encoder that you can also use with Premiere, for example. And whatever, uh, so we are going to show you uh, first the, uh, the way to do it inside After Effects. For this, it's important that you set your work area to the area um, that you want to export. In our case, we want to export the entire clip, right? So we set it here from the beginning to, to the end to cover everything. And then we go to composition and say add to render queue. And if I do this, you can see that here a new window occurs, render queue. And in this queue, you have now one entry, namely this guru composition that should be rendered. And you can add more compositions if you like. So if you have several compositions in your a project and want to export all of them, you can add them all to the render queue. And then you can choose here between different render settings, yeah, current settings, draft settings, whatever. So best settings is your usually good choice. And output module is actually the kind of video clip that you want to have, so which codec to use and so on. And here you have also different presets, H246 iPod video, for example, animated GIF, whatever you like. Lossless is, uh, for example, by default, a lossless uh, AVI video. And then you can modify those. Yeah. By this here, I just choose one of the presets, in this case, lossless. And now I can modify it by clicking on the text itself, actually. And there we can see that ah, actually the lossless is usually just video for Windows and no AVI. But you can also change this to say, I want to have, yeah, for example, audio only. You can export a WAV file. You can uh, export uh, H206, uh, uh, for <laughs> H264 encoded uh, video. You can uh, choose flash video, whatever you like. Uh, one thing I also like very much is to uh, export to TIFF sequences. This will give you not one video clip, but single images for each frame. Yeah, So a lot of TIFF images. Uh, and the nice thing about this is that if you have a folder containing uh, thousands of TIFF images, if you need to change something in your project, you don't need to replace the entire file again and again. So let's think of, we are choosing here TIFF sequence, hit OK. Then we say here, okay, it should be uh, uh, saved here to some directory. So here you choose where to store it. Yeah. So we get now a lot of Guru composition TIFF files, Guru composition 0001, 0002, 0003, and so on. And the nice thing is, let's say this rendering takes half an hour, and later you get the idea, hmm, maybe I can do this fire here, it's then still a little bit cooler by adding some effects or whatever then you only need to replace, re-render the TIFFs for this part. Yeah. E so if at the beginning nothing changed, you can just replace those TIFF images here by choosing the work area like this and just rendering out uh, the, uh, only this part here. Yeah. What usually is rendered is just the work area at least as long as it's set like this here in the render settings. So the default best settings, if I click on it, say um, time span work area only. Then a clip only for this is created and this is very nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, if you now really want to create these images, you hit on render and that's it. Then it starts rendering and creating all your images. But I'm not going to do this now because I want to show you the second option of how you can export your stuff. Okay, and the second option to export your project is to save your After Effects project. Yeah, you go to File, Save, whatever. And then you start the Adobe Media Encoder that I have here already open. So let's make this a little bit smaller, like this. 
Uh, actually, I have here the German interface because I don't know how to switch it for the media encoder. But anyway, you go to File and then Add After Effects Composition. So in German, After Effects Composition hinzufügen. Uh, but yeah, in your version probably Add After Effects Composition. And then you have here the option to navigate on your uh, 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 on your hard drive this After Effects project. And then it opens this After Effects project here and shows you here all the compositions of this project. Uh, takes a while. And now you can see, okay, we have here the Guru composition in this project. And I just hit OK. And now you can choose your options of how you want to encode it. Yeah. So again, you have here NTSC presets, whatever presets you want. You can directly export it as YouTube video. For example, let's say this is a YouTube widescreen HD video. Then you click. So this is what you choose here. Yeah. Format and uh, preset for this format. So H264 video. And I want the YouTube widescreen preset for it. And then you choose here the file name where you want to save it. So this is uh, okay for me, or we can say also call this Guru Final Video. And then you click on a Start Render Queue, or in German Warteschlange starten, and your final video is rendered. Okay, this was the first Guru lesson and I wa hope it was useful for you and gave you a nice, not too complicated and very motivating starting point uh, to learn After Effects. I hope I also see you again in the second lesson. Uh, my name is Matthias and this is a video tutorial for mamoworld.com. <laughs>